Hello YouTube. Hope everyone is doing well. Maddie here, aka Mafarns. So for years now I've been asked to do an M-Horn um, assembly and tuning video. Um, unfortunately, I have not until recently had a horn, an M-Horn, that I was willing to take apart because one is factory seal wired and one I really like the tuning of. This guy, however, I recently acquired specifically for the purpose of having an M5 to play around with. Some of you may recognize this tool. This is a spanner wrench that we use to do our voicing. Now, a quick word about that. A lot of people will say, how do you tune an M-horn? Well, tuning means to change the pitch, and that's not actually what we're doing here. What we're doing is called voicing, and that is setting the pressure at which each bell of the horn speaks. So that's what we're going to be doing today. This is part three in a series of videos uh, all about um, M-horn maintenance and anatomy and assembly and voicing, all of that good stuff. Um, I have the links for the other two videos down in the description. Check that out at your leisure. And without further ado, we will get started. All right, first off, let's go over the tools that we're going to need. Um, Earplugs and an air supply are a must. You need your bolts for attaching the heads to the manifold and the bells. Um, you need your gaskets. You need anti-seize lubricant. Um, you're going to need a half inch socket with a three inch extension um, for attaching the heads to the bells and manifold. And you're going to need um, either an Allen's an Allen wrench or one of these attachments for a socket wrench will work too for doing the um, clamp screws. And then you do need some sort of spanner wrench. Now this one is custom made by Mike Muha. Lots of people really love these. I do too. Um, it has... It's made out of square steel. It's got these pegs on it that line up um, with the holes here on the heads. Now you can either put the pegs directly in there or you can use it kind of like so on the outside of the spanner boss. Um, most of the time just putting the, head, the pegs directly into the holes works just fine. And so yeah, as far as tools and materials go, that's about it. All right, so one thing that I forgot that you need for doing a invoicing is some way to block off the air ports on the manifold. Um, all I have for this is a really simple setup. It's just a 5 16 bolt. It's got a rubber washer and a flat washer on each side. And then it's got a wing nut. And all you do is you just tighten, tighten it down so that it blocks off, serves as a temporary yet effective way to block off the air ports on the unused portions of the manifold while you do your voicing on each bell. Now there are two methods to voicing an M horn. Um, one is called a shop tune and one is called a field tune. Again, the proper term is voicing, but that's just the common terminology. So what I'm gonna demonstrate today is a shop tune. And what that means is you assemble each bell and head to the manifold as you voice the horn. A field tune is where you fully assemble the horn and you tighten the back caps down so much so that the bells that you're not voicing are unable to speak because there's so much pressure on the cap. And then you, then when you go to eat, voice each bell, you loosen it and then do the voicing procedure. Personally, I don't see any reason to do a field tune unless you're literally doing it on top of a locomotive. Um, the reason for that is you run the risk of over tightening things and damaging stuff when you do a field tune. So if you have um, the ability to do a shop tune, which most of us do, just go with that. All right, so as I mentioned before, um, the first, you gotta assemble each bell individually as you do your voicing. Now the proper way or the most accepted way to do an M horn is you start with the highest pitch and go to the lowest pitch. So on an M5, that means five, four, three, two, one. On an M3, that means four, two, one. And what you do is you start, of course, by assembling the head and the bell to the manifold. I've got the number five all set up, ready to go here. 
And all we need to do now is put the diaphragm in there, put some anti-seize on the clamp ring um, inside the head, and start to voice it. Now I'll show the full assembly procedure for putting the head and bell and everything on the manifold when I do the number four. After that, I'm going to skip the assembly and anti-seize procedures, and I'm just going to show you the actual voicing for all five bells. All right, anti-seize is important. Make sure you spread a good amount on all of your threaded surfaces inside the head. This is going to need way more than what I'm showing here, but I'm just doing this for the video demonstration. So I'm going to put some inside the head, and I'm going to put some on the cap as well. Okay, with the head and the cap properly lubricated, now we begin the assembly process. And all you do, take your finished diaphragm assembly and place it in there. However, very important, especially when you have the horn vertically like this, all the heads have this little ridge inside, and it's really easy to let the cap fall, or excuse me, let the diaphragm fall down into that ridge like so. If you install the cap and you tighten it down like this, you will bend the diaphragm. And the technical term for this is bad. Nobody wants bent diaphragms because, yeah, it was a pain just to find um, and eventually make replacements for the number one. So, take care to make sure when you're installing your back cap that your diaphragm does not fall down onto that little ridge like so. Make sure that it is up like this. And they are going to want to tip out on you. So, what I like to do... So one thing I forgot to mention until I got to the number two bell. These diaphragms are not bi-directional. You have the front, which goes inside against the nozzle, and you have the back, which goes against the back cap. The front is the side that has the nut, the large washer, and most importantly, the clapper disc. The clapper disc is what sits on top of the nozzle, and what actually valves or vibrates against the nozzle. The back diaphragm disc is what sits against the back cap. So yeah, make sure your diaphragm's go in like this, not this. This is how the diaphragm goes in. Very important. Okay, got the diaphragm in, got the cap on, um, and as you can see, it's almost flush with the head, but still nice and loose. And I will be honest, um, I actually cheated. I just took my whole tuning rib, tipped it down while I put the cap in, so that way I knew the diaphragm was properly seated. That is another reason why doing a field tune, is, or excuse me, doing a shop tune is preferable, because you can just take it off, take the whole horn off the rig and tip it down while you're putting your diaphragm in. That way you know it will not be caught. Okay. Let's add some air, and let's actually get to voicing this thing. Okay, you got your bell assembled to the head and the manifold, you got your diaphragm in properly seated, you got your cap on and loose. Now we're ready to add air and actually start voicing the thing. Um, for this, you want to add air at a reduced pressure around 30 to 50 psi. What I like to do, and I find super easy, just take a ball valve on your tank and open it up about halfway. And you want to slowly, as you have air flowing through the horn, you want to slowly tighten the cap up until it goes from a buzz or a hum to a solid note. So buzz, hum. Solid note, just like that. And then common wisdom says, Tighten it just a little bit more, and then all you do, tighten your top of your clamp ring screw down. Okay, now that we got our number five bell properly voiced, just going to tighten down the clamp ring. This does not need to be super, super tight. Just enough to have it firm so that the so that our cap is not going to back off on us. All right, now I will show you how to assemble everything onto the manifold, and then we'll continue voicing. 
Okay, to assemble a head and a bell to the manifold, take your head, make sure your o-ring, if you have one, is in the nozzle, put the nozzle in. Uh, make sure that you lubricate the o-ring and the nozzle and everything else as it's going in. I sprayed all of this with silicone beforehand. Take your three bolts with your uh, lock washers, slide those through. This is really hard to do one-handed, there we go. And then take a gasket, install it on the back, and you want to remove your blinker plate. Of course, I didn't think to do this beforehand. All right, remove your blinker screw. Take your partially assembled head with the gasket and slide everything through. Now, be aware, the number five bell and the number four bell, the heads go on sideways. For the three, one, and two, everything goes on vertically as you would expect. Take that, slide it through, like so. Now, we're gonna take our other gasket, and again, we gotta put this on sideways, slide that into place. All right, with your second gasket installed, you have little nubs of the bolts sticking out. That's actually all that holds the bell on, even for the larger number one bell. Um, that is normal. So you wanna make sure you anti-seize everything up real well. You could also apply anti-seize before you slide the bolts through, but I find that especially as tight as these gaskets go, um, that just tends to make a mess of everything. So for M horns, I like to do it after. All right, nice and goopy there. All right, I'm going to do my best to try and make sure that y'all can get a good view of this. So we got our bell, put it on the right way, and just get it screwed in place. Okay, it's attached. Oops. There we go. I have a lot of respect for people that do all sorts of restoration and assembly videos all the time. This is trying to have do work while you have it also visible to the camera is a lot harder than it seems. You can get these pretty tight, but not don't super crank them down, of course, you know. Don't want to strip the heads on anything. Or heads. Don't want to strip the bolts on anything. Or threads. I cannot think of words today. All that good. Okay, and this is the point at which the number five um, head and bell were at. So again, we'll grease up the inside of the head, install the diaphragm, install the cap, and from here on out I'm only going to show the voicing for each bell. Okay, and now for voicing, same exact procedure. Where did our number five? We don't do anything and we leave it as is as we voice the number four. Same thing for the number four when we do the one, two, and three, so on and so forth. You voice each bell and then you just leave it as is and do each one in sequence. Nice and loose. <laughs> like that. All right, number three. OK, 
Okay, see there, that's too tight. Um, buzz. Number two. Okay, last but not least, the number one. This is the one that has my homemade diaphragms in there. I am cautiously optimistic that this is going to work. What's the last step in any horn voicing? Test it out, of course. In theory, after we voiced it 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, it should sound 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's see. Wow, that's loud even with earplugs in. But yeah, I like it.